Good morning everyone. In this lecture and the upcoming lecture we're gonna be discussing some of the breast diseases. But before that we're gonna start with the anatomy of the breast structure and function and then we're gonna touch base on the signs and symptoms of breast diseases and then we're gonna move into the benign breast conditions and the breast cancer. So let's start. So let's start with the breast structure. The breast has two main structures. The first one is the large ducts and the second one is the terminal duct lobular unit. So let's start with the large ducts. The large ducts are three-dimensional arborizing branching system. And this system starts here at this point in this figure with larger ducts and then they gonna branch into smaller ducts called segmental ducts and then subsegmental ducts and finally into the lobule. And here we reach the terminal duct lobular unit, which is the second structure in the breast. So this is considered the functional unit of the breast. Here the SNI are grouped together in clusters to form lobules that are connected to the terminal ductules and that's why it's called the terminal duct lobular unit. Furthermore, the breast has two types of epithelial cells lining the ducts and also the lobules in the terminal duct lobular units. The two types of epithelial cells include the luminal cells and the myoepithelial cells and here they are highlighted in two different colors. The luminal cells are highlighted in blue while the myoepithelial cells are highlighted in black. So look to the large ducts, the terminal duct lobular unit, every structure is lined by the two layers. So the luminal cells are the innermost layer of the bilayer ductolobular system and it's highlighted here as I said in blue. While the myoepithelial layer is the outer layer that rests on the basement membrane and it's highlighted here in black. Furthermore, the breast has two types of stroma. One is called the interlobular stroma and this stroma is highlighted here in red. And this stroma surrounds the large ducts and the terminal duct lobular unit and it's composed of mature adipose tissue which forms the majority of the breast volume and also fibroconnective tissue including fibroblast, myofibroblast, blood vessels, lymphatics and nerves. The second type of stroma is called interlobular stroma and it's highlighted here in a green. So it's the part of the stroma that surrounds the terminal duct lobular unit. So the breast has two types of epithelial cells and two types of stroma and two main structures. This figure shows the histology of the terminal duct lobular unit. And as you can appreciate here, it has architectural organization that looks like a tree where the terminal duct here forms the trunk and it opens into the smaller SNI right here which forms a branch of this tree. So they are the branches and or the lobules. In this figure, the white arrows points into the terminal duct lobular unit, which is the functional unit of the breast where the milk is produced by the luminal cells. And the blue arrows right here, they're gonna point into the branching ducts that are connected to the terminal duct lobular unit. Before I start discussing the signs and symptoms of breast diseases, I want you to know that the underlying cause is benign in more than 90% of cases. And the likelihood of malignancy increases with age. So, for example, the risk of nipple discharge being due to cancer increases from 7% in women younger than the age of 60 versus 30% in women older than the age of 60. So, it's the same symptom, but the age of the patient is the main factor that increases the chances of this symptom or sign to be related to malignancy. Also, only 10% of the palpable masses in women younger than the age of 40 are due to cancer, while 60% of the palpable masses in women older than the age of 50 are related to cancer. So you may wonder and ask yourself if all patients with breast cancer are symptomatic, and the answer is no, because only 45% of the patients have symptoms, while the rest of them 
which is about 55%, they come to the clinical attention through the screening tests. So only 45% of your patients are symptomatic. And the most common symptoms of a breast cancer, palpable masses, followed by pain, followed by nipple discharge, and finally inflammatory changes. So it's about 50-50 percentage, 45% are symptomatic while 55% are detected by screening test and here it comes the importance of a screening. So what is mammographic screening? Simply, it's a screening test that uses X-ray picture of the breast that is called the mammogram. And the mammogram, this X-ray, is able to detect early non-palpable asymptomatic breast cancer before metastasis so you're gonna be able to diagnose the cases at an early stage so you're gonna provide proper management and early management and better survival for your patient and the average size of the invasive carcinoma detected by the mammography is about one centimeter and at this stage most of the lesions are non-palpable and asymptomatic and also at this stage, it's considered early because only 15% may have metastasis to the regional lymph nodes. Also, the sensitivity and the specificity of this type of X-ray, which is called the mammogram, increases with the age of the patient. And this happens due to the normal replacement of the fibrous tissue of the breast, which is usually radiodense tissue, that is a that present in a larger amount in younger women with the fatty radiolucent tissue in older women. This figure shows three X-ray mammogram images from three different patients. So let's start from the left to the right. This one relates to a patient who is an 80-year-old lady. Look to the breast tissue. The breast, breast tissue is moderately dense breast tissue, which means that uh, there is still fibrous tissue in this breast. But still, you can appreciate a well-circumscribed mass here. Let's compare that with this figure. This is another mammogram from a different patient who is a 79-year-old lady. Look at the contrast between this speculated mass here and the radiolucent background because the breast content is mostly fat in this breast. And let's look to the third example here. As you can appreciate, the orange arrow points to dots which looks radio dense and those are calcifications. This is from a 77 year old lady. And the background the breast tissue is moderately dense tissue. This means that if the fibrous content of the breast tissue increases, which uh, and this happens in younger age ladies, then it's difficult to differentiate the lesions from the background tissue. This figure shows the American Cancer Society recommendations for breast cancer screening for women with average risk. So as you can appreciate here, they recommend that women should have the opportunity to begin the screening if they want by the age of 40. But they should begin the screening program yearly by, by doing the mammograms by the age of 45. At the age of 55, they have the option, so they can continue doing the mammogram yearly or they can do it every other year. And after the age of 55, they can continue the regular mammograms for as long as they are in good health. Regarding the clinical presentations of a breast disease, one of them is pain or what's called nostalgia or mastodynia and this is a common symptom often related to menses. This happens due to the cyclic edema and swelling related to the menstrual cycle. The pain can be also localized to a specific area in the breast and this happens usually due to the presence of localized lesion, like ruptured cyst or trauma to the adipose tissue that is associated with fat necrosis. However, all painful masses of the breast are benign except for 10% that can be related to cancer for unknown cause. Inflammation is another clinical presentation of a breast disease, but this one is considered rare. And usually the inflammation is associated with edema and erythema. 
The most common cause of inflammation in breast diseases is due to infection, especially due to lactation and breastfeeding. The inflammation is an important mimic of inflammatory breast cancer and we're going to discuss that in the upcoming lecture. Now nipple discharge can be normal and usually this happens when it's small in quantity and bilateral and it also can be a clinical presentation of a breast disease for example milky discharge or what's called galacturia this condition is associated with several etiologies the top of them are related to elevated prolactin levels like in pituitary adenoma in hypothyroidism in endocrine and ovulatory syndromes and patients who are taking the oral contraceptive pills or some medications like the tricyclic antidepressants the methyl doba or the phenothiazines nipple discharge can be also bloody or serous and this happens commonly due to the presence of large duct papilloma and it may happen also during pregnancy and this happens due to the rapid growth and remodeling of the breast tissue for mukini sirfi and the patient's bloody or serous discharge. However, if your patient have a spontaneous unilateral and bloody discharge, you should be worried because this increases the concern for malignancy and you, have, you should have a further workup for this patient. Another clinical presentation of breast diseases is the presence of palpable masses, which means the presence of masses that can be detected by physical examination. Berghman in you know, about 95% of these masses are benign, all palpable masses require evaluation. So the evaluation of your patient is mandatory and the workup is mandatory in those cases. The most common causes of palpable lesions are cysts, fibroadenoma, and invasive carcinoma. As I said, the palpable masses are the masses that can be detected through the physical examination, and they are generally detected when they are about 2 to 3 cm in size. Less than 2 cm, it's difficult to be detected through the physical examination. Gynecomastia is the only common breast symptom in male, and in, in, in this condition, there is an increase in both the stroma and the epithelial cells due to the imbalance between the estrogens. So when the estrogens are elevated, and this will stimulate the breast tissue and the androgens are decreased and the androgens have like a counter acting mechanism against the estrogen. So estrogens will proliferation of the breast tissue.